Hey guys, it's Stanley. We are back in Santa Cruz County. We are in the city of Scotts Valley where the master of suspense, Alfred Hitchcock, had a home and lived here for over 30 years. I'm gonna take you as close as I can to the old Hitchcock estate. And I'll show you how Santa Cruz County influenced and altered two of Alfred Hitchcock's most famous films. Join me if you dare. Just up this road is the old Hitchcock estate. Now there's a no trespassing sign right here, so we can't go much farther. Unless you have a wine tasting reservation at the winery on property. I made a reservation. Let's see how close we can get to the old Hitchcock estate. By the way, this wine tasting reservation cost me $54. So if you could help me out, please smash that like button, murder it if you have to. All right, let's go. And if you want to skip to the psycho or the bird segments, I put timestamps in the description. And there it is, the Hitchcock Estate. I'm so close I could almost touch it. And just below that is the winery that the general public can go to if you have a reservation. And this is about as close as I should get without annoying my friends who are with me to drink some wine or annoying the wine staff. But let's get some wine and I'll tell you about Hitchcock and his home on the hill. The Hitchcocks purchased the estate on the hill in 1940. Most of the grapes that they harvested, they sold to local wineries. But Hitch made a small batch of table wine that he served to his invited guests, like Cary Grant and Jimmy Stewart. Here's a picture of Ingrid Bergman with Hitchcock on the estate. They also hosted Princess Grace and Prince Rainier of Monaco. They even brought their two young children, Princess Stephanie and Prince Albert. But mostly the Hitchcocks enjoyed the privacy and the quietness away from the hustle and bustle of Los Angeles. Hitchcock worked on a number of his films in the seclusion of this home. And they didn't just hang out at their home on the hill, they also went to the neighboring towns like Santa Cruz. Here's a picture of Alfred Hitchcock, his wife Alma, their daughter, and a friend about to go on a sailboat with Jack O'Neill. Jack O'Neill is the founder of the surfwear and surfboard company O'Neill's. And that roof behind Hitch is that building right here. Hopefully someone brought a lifeboat, am I right? <laughs> Hitchcock would come down here to the United Cigar Agency at 1533 Pacific Avenue. He would pick up a newspaper and his favorite cigars. The United Cigar Agency went out of business in 1988, and you can say the whole building went out of business in 1989 when it was demolished in the Loma Prieta earthquake. Yes, just like Bill Clinton, Hitchcock loved a good cigar. <clears throat> for, for smoking. For smoking. The Hitchcocks also liked eating at Adolph's, which was right here on Water Street, Gilda's, and Stagnero's on the wharf. And what's significant about eating at the wharf is to get to or from here, you would have to drive right past the old McCray Hotel. Legend has it that the McCray Hotel was the inspiration for the Bates Mansion when Alfred Hitchcock was working on Psycho. This home was built in 1867 and went through various hands and owners, and in 1926 it was turned into the McCray Hotel. Hitchcock didn't drive, so he would have been looking out the window on their way to the wharf at the imposing house up on the hill, and then the rooms for rent right across the street. The apartment rooms for rent across the street were built in 1926. You may be thinking, Stanley, every town has their own rundown old house, which is referred to as the Psycho House. But let's look at some anecdotal evidence that might lend some truth to this local legend. In Hitchcock's time, these buildings were not here, and this hotel looked a lot more rundown and spooky looking. So like I said, we can be certain that Hitchcock saw this mansion with his own eyes whenever they went to the wharf for dinner, or to the beach even. 
More anecdotal evidence is that some of the newspapers around here state the McRae psycho connection as fact. Here's a Santa Cruz Sentinel article from 2016 where Santa Cruz historian Russ Gibson says, Looking up, you can kind of see what he, Hitchcock, was envisioning and get an idea of what he ended up reproducing pieces of in the back lot of Hollywood. Truth to the legend even gets verified on the Santa Cruz County Chamber of Commerce website. The article says, Did you know that the dilapidated McRae Hotel inspired Alfred Hitchcock's Psycho? It's true! And in a newspaper article from 1999, it says that Hitchcock's favorite place to do his pre-production work was at his Scotts Valley retreat. So when he was staying in Scotts Valley and hanging out in Santa Cruz, he was thinking about his latest movies and working on them. This wasn't just vacation time. Here we have a quiet little motel tucked away off the main highway and as you see, perfectly harmless looking. When in fact, it has now become known as the scene of the crime. This motel also has, as an adjunct, an old house, which is, if I may say so, a little more sinister looking. Now, if you compare the Bates Motel and the McRae Mansion, they really don't look that much alike, but the feeling, the vibe of the Psycho House and the Bates Motel is right here. An exact copy of the McRae Hotel was never an option. In order to stay on budget, they had to use pieces of already pre-existing universal set designs. The Psycho House is made up primarily of pieces of the Harvey House. This structure is best remembered for being featured in the 1950 movie Harvey and modern audiences might recognize it from Desperate Housewives. And in the book, Hitchcock Truffaut, where French director Francois Truffaut interviews Alfred Hitchcock, they talk about all of his films. In one segment, they talk about the Psycho House. Truffaut says, in Psycho, there's a whole arsenal of terror which you generally avoid, the ghostly house. Hitchcock says, the actual locale of events is in Northern California, where that type of house is very common. They're either called California Gothic, or when they're particularly awful, they're called California Gingerbread. So even though Hitchcock, who is from England and has traveled all over Europe and lives primarily in Southern California, he singles out Northern California as the inspiration, as the style of the Psycho House, which he calls California Gothic. Now that's narrowing it down. I also came across this 2021 Santa Cruz Good Times article, and in the comments, speaking of Alfred Hitchcock's wife Alma, somebody said, I was researching the Hitchcock connection to the old McRae Hotel off 3rd Street. My grandmother was Alma's personal assistant, housekeeper, secretary, typist, etc. And she had told me that Alfred patterned the Bates Motel, Psycho, from the McRae Hotel. So this is a very interesting first-hand account, if to be believed. So what do you guys think? Is everyone in Santa Cruz psycho for believing this? Or is there truth that the McRae Hotel and the adjacent apartments inspired Alfred Hitchcock while he was making Psycho? Here's a picture of Alfred Hitchcock on a Santa Cruz beach. I believe he's down here at Mitchell's Cove. Due to big storms and erosion, it's no longer accessible. I believe he's standing way out there, somewhere is about right here. And he's on the beach walking his two dogs, Joffrey and Stanley. Yes, one of Alfred Hitchcock's dogs was named Stanley. Stanley means dwells by the stony meadow. And it's true, we Stanleys, we love dwelling by stony meadows. Give me a stony meadow and I'm gonna dwell in it but on another beach, just a few miles up the road. A sight unheard of occurred. In the early morning hours of August 18th, 1961, something crazy happened. At three in the morning, up in the sky, thousands of birds started crashing into buildings, into cars, into homes, and onto the ground. 
frightened residents ran out of their homes to see what was going on, but then quickly ran back in as thousands of birds fell from the sky. Eight people were bitten that morning. The birds in question were sooty shearwaters. Here's what a sooty shearwater looks like. They're about 17 inches tall, they're dark colored, and they're native to New Zealand and Australia, where they migrate here to this part of the world in the winter. Excuse me, sir. Excuse me. I'm looking for a sooty shearwater. Do you know any sooty shearwaters? No comment? At dawn, in Capitola alone, they collected over 4,000 dead sooty shearwaters, as well as other ones that were on the ground, dazed, and flapping around. Somehow, the bird frenzy spread all the way to Los Angeles to Alfred Hitchcock, and he phoned into the Santa Cruz Sentinel newspaper. This is where the Santa Cruz Sentinel was located at the time. Even before the newspapers had been delivered, Hitchcock called in here and had the reporter read him verbatim the story that was gonna be released that morning. He also had them send him a Santa Cruz Sentinel all the way to Hollywood. Three days later, the Sentinel posted a follow-up saying that Alfred Hitchcock was gonna be using the Seabird Invasion story in his next movie. And that's exactly what he did. The Birds is very loosely based on Daphne du Maurier's short story. And the Seabird Invasion in Santa Cruz County makes it into the script. Say, something like this happened in Santa Cruz last year. The town was just covered with seagulls. It was very foggy that morning in 1961, and so the long-standing theory was that the Sooty Shearwaters were lost and confused in the fog and were headed towards the city lights. And that explanation also makes it into the final film. That's right, sir. I recall it. A large flock of seagulls got lost in the fog and headed into the town where all the lights were. And they made some mess too, smashing into buildings and everything. It wasn't until 1995 when scientists discovered the real reason why the birds went crazy, and that was domoic acid. They dropped some acid! Hey, it was the 1960s. They were up there in the sky, flying around. It was like Lucy in the sky with diamonds up there. Well, that's not quite what domoic acid is. Domoic acid is a neurotoxin that's produced by algae and it can accumulate in shellfish, sardines, and anchovies. So basically, the Sooty Shearwaters, they ate some bad food and they got poisoned. So they were super sick and disoriented. Domoic acid, more like demonic acid, am I right? <laughs> okay, I'll stop. Northern California would continue to inspire Alfred Hitchcock which we'll check out another time. All right, that's all I've got for you today. We'll do some filming locations next time. This video is a little bit different than what I normally do, but I thought, hey, let's take a stab at it. All right, bye.